Hi everybody, Canadian Trapper. Well, uh, I'm in the fur shed tonight and uh, I caught a beaver this morning and I thought I'd make a video of how I put up my beaver fur. I know one of my subscribers had asked me uh, if I did have any videos of how I put up my fur. Uh, I didn't at that time, but I told him that I would make one. So uh, it's James Charles. He wanted to know how I put up uh, some of my fur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video. I'm going to go through the whole process, the skinning, the fleshing, and putting it on a board and uh, hopefully it might be a help to somebody. Um, I know there's many different ways to uh, do this, but this is how I do it. The tools I have, I've got my beaver skinning knife, and I use these two tools as well. That's another, uh, it's a long knife, and then uh, this is my knife I use for cutting the feet or anywhere where there's bones or things like that. Uh, that way I won't dull my other good knives. And I'll show you what I use this one for uh, when we get there. So I'm gonna get uh, my comb, and I'm going to clean them all up. I'm going to brush the fur out, make sure it's nice and clean and there's nothing in there. He uh, was sitting in front of the fan for quite a while to dry off. And uh, I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and well, I'm going to take you through the process and how I put up my beavers. There's probably uh, a whole bunch of different ways how guys do it. This is just how I do it. Uh, I'm not claiming that I'm better than anybody else in doing it, but I'm just going to show you uh, the process that I go through to put up a beaver. Alright, so I have all my tools here, I have my three knives um, and everything like that. But the first thing I want to do, uh, when I got this beaver this morning, of course it was really wet. I put him in front of the uh, fan that I have set up there and dried him out really well. But I'm going to take my brush. I want to make sure uh, first that his fur is all nice and clean. I'll even back brush him here, make sure there's no any kind of mats or anything like that. And uh, clean them all up really good. His fur seems to be really nice and prime. Well, we're going to brush them out, make sure everything's nice and clean. We'll flip them over. Again, brushing them all out. I don't know if you guys can see this. I got this set up on my new tripod. One thing I, uh, I do when I flesh my beavers, uh, the bigger the beaver, the harder they are to flesh, so I have to use my sharp fleshing tool. But um, this beaver here, I might be fortunate enough way that I, I can push everything off so we'll hope for that so there he's all nice and clean no more mats or there's a little bit of dirt in him and stuff like that but that'll shake out after um, not real worried about those things the only reason I'm worried about any kind of real big mats or anything like that is when it does come time to flesh him if I put it on the board and I'm fleshing and it makes a little bump in the in the, the pelt as I'm fleshing it with that knife it's gonna make a cut right there so that's why I want to make sure that there's nothing in there so uh, the first thing we're going to do, we've got to remove the feet and we have to make a cut around the tail. I'm going to move the camera in a little bit closer so I can show you how I do that. Alright, so we're going to remove the feet. Uh, like I said uh, when I started the video, this is the knife I'm going to use to do that. This thing is really sharp, but it's just a regular knife. Uh, I'm not real worried about the, uh, the edge on that. You know, I can bring it back pretty good. It's not like what's one of my expensive skinning knives. So uh, what I do is right here is I take the front foot right in front of this pad here. I just cut it like this and I cut it all the way around. Just like that. Get a little spin. Get it off. And I'll do this side. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the hind feet. Now the hind feet are a little bit different here. You see they've got this little elbow. Uh, what I used to do is just cut cut it around like this and then I'd follow that bone down and find it. But what I do now, bend it this way, you see that? And I'll cut it towards the foot and then it brings it forward and then I bring it up and over and then back down like that. Just that simple. Take the foot, like I said, here's that little elbow at the heel of his foot, I guess, not an elbow. <laughs> it was an elbow would be his front foot. So we're gonna take this and, like I said, run it right along the edge. Okay, come up, come over, top like this, just to cut that fur free. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around the tail. I'm going to step to the side here so I can work this way. So um, 
All I'm going to do, literally going to cut right around the base of the tail here. Some guys cut the tail right off. I like to keep the tail because I use a lot of my beavers for bait and stuff like that. So I use the tail to carry it and nail it to trees and all that kind of stuff. So basically that's all I did. I just made a small incision or cut around the base of the tail. Making sure here that I'm all the way around, which I am. So that's good. Next step here is uh, I'm going to come up. I'm going to make a vertical line to the vent and I'm going to go around each side of the vent. And I'm going to use, still use this knife because this knife is sharp. The thing is here, I don't want to go too deep because we got casters in here. If I stab that in there and start ripping it apart, I'm going to mess those casters up. And uh, when we're trapping, we want to use the most of the animal as we can. Uh, and the casters are, uh, you know, they're uh, marketable. Uh, right now the price is pretty good, so uh, we want to make sure we treat them right as well. So, I'm going to stick the knife in here easy. I'm going to work my way up. All around the vent. When I took my trapping course, of course there was quite a few fellows that wanted to learn how to, how to skin. So everybody was trying to get a turn and there was only like two beavers there. So uh, we didn't get much opportunity to actually have hands-on experience when we were skinning, uh, learning how to skin. Then I started trapping and the first year I trapped, I knew where there was a bunch of beaver dams, so I figured, well, I'm going to go trap all these beavers, and I did, and the first day I came home, I had caught six my first year trapping, and uh, <laughs> I tell you, I had six beavers laying on the floor in here, and I had to skin them and flush them all and put them on boards, and I would maybe had uh, two, two minutes of beaver skinning prior to that, but uh, you get to learn how to do it, and you have to just get out there and try it and see what works for you. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is I want to cut a line here. Let's see if I want to back this camera up a little bit. So now I'm going to cut a line. Cut the, the, uh, I want to cut the pelt from here, where I stopped at the top of the vent. And I'm going to cut it all the way up to the top here, right to the, the ellipse. So, and that's what I use this knife for, because what I can do with this, the, uh, the one thing you want to be careful here is you don't want to take the knife and jam it in because if you cut all the, uh, the stomach lining muscles, you're going to end up with a bunch of guts coming out and all the intestines and stuff. <laughs> That's going to make your skinning experience not much fun and it's going to be a lot of cleanup and the smell is going to be bad and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to try to avoid that. Once you get the knife in, you can find there's a great little, there's a, there is the, the level in there where you're at the right spot. I just split it a little bit. And I'm just riding above the muscle. Smaller beavers are uh, a lot more dainty than the big ones. The big ones you can get away with a lot. There's a lot of fat and stuff in there. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to split it right up to the lip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my other knife and I'm going to come from the teeth down. And I'm going to meet that cut that I made. Alright, so I have that cut made. Now what I'm going to want to start to do is I'm going to want to remove, we're going to start skinning. So that's where I'm going to use this knife here. I'm going to literally just grab the side of this like this. And just slowly. Now that's like I said, smaller beavers, you're going to have to be careful. This part of the beaver here is really, really easy to cut, yeah, especially when you're fleshing. Um, so when I get on the fleshing board, I'll show you what I do. Uh, I never use a sharp end in here. I always just push the fat because I find it pushes really good. And I, uh, I don't uh, clean skin any of my beavers. <laughs> I uh, tried that once and it didn't turn out very well. So uh, I decided to go this route. I found the best way I could do to flesh and uh, how it works best for me. And it's, uh, so that's what I just decided to go with. Now I'm coming around the side here. This is the part where you're going to start seeing the separation here between the meat and the, uh, the actual pelt. So this is where that th uh, layer of meat we're going to take off with the flesher uh, begins here. Time. There's no rush. Now 
Now I'm going to come down into here. I leave a lot of the gristle on the pelt here because uh, I can take it off better with a flusher than I can with a knife. I end up making holes in the pelt here if I try to uh, get too close. And there's some guys that are awesome at this, man. They can wind through these beavers like nothing. Clean skin them. No problems at all. And they're fast too. But like I said, anytime I've tried to go fast doing this, <laughs> I've ended up making a really bad mess. So I've just decided to uh, slow things down a little bit and not rush. Come up here around. This is the front leg area, the hind leg area. So, want to be careful too how you hold your knife. Don't hold it in towards the pelt like that and cut. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rolling that beaver. Bring his front leg through. If you can get your finger in the hole, it's even better. leg again like I said. I'm going to start rolling the beaver over like this. I'll try to keep it in the view of the camera. Careful, this is all abdomen here. If I cut like this I'm going to get right into the abdomen. And if I do I just did it to show you. <laughs> so we can see here all this meat that's coming off with the pelt and the separation here that I'm actually moving right here between that and that's just rolling back. Like I said, I'm not uh, clean skinning this. I leave quite a bit on the, on the pelt um, and I'll take that off on the fleshing beam. And this is the stuff I'm using for my bait too, and my bait boxes. So you want to be careful, like I said, don't rush. You cut the pelt in this area, and now we're starting to get into the place where they grade your pelts. You don't want any holes in there for sure. You don't want any holes in your pelt whatsoever. But, you know, things happen. Don't drive yourself crazy if you do put one in there. So I'm almost going to start on the other side. You can start to see this dark mark here. That's from the uh, that's from the coney bear. All right. I was going to flip them, but actually I'm going to do the back leg here first before I flip them over. So again, holding it, getting to the end of the leg. You're going to start to see the part you cut. There's the bottom part. Now, when I took the feet off this, that's just the way I do it, guys. Some guys use an axe. Some guys are real slick at it. They can just pop them off in a second. Um, so. so here I am. I'm at the back end of the beaver. Here's his back leg. His tail is here. I'm trying to get this little bit of meat away. And as you can see, it's going to start to turn into a gristle here at the back. This is back towards where his tail is. You can see his tail's right here, and you see that gristly fat. I leave a lot of that on the pelt because... I don't like uh, putting holes in there, so like I said, I can take it off a lot easier with the fleshing uh, knife rather than trying to clean skin it in here. So, we're done about half the beaver. I'm going to flip them over now. I'll put this back like this. Bring them back this way. And now I'm going to start working it working on this side. So we're down in the cast area. Now you can see here, there's this line right here. That's where about we're going to start rolling that meat onto the hide, onto the pelt, and that's see how that's coming out there? And now we've got that little zone. I do try to clean skin the head a little bit more um, just for the reason that it, I find it's easier when you're putting the uh, pelt on the board it looks cleaner and stuff so and by uh, no means is this uh, video how to make a beaver pelt for competition. <laughs> but 
by, you know, this is just how I skin my beavers and how I flesh them, guys. You know, there's some guys out there, when I went to the uh, North Bay Fur Harvesters Convention, man, there were some guys out there, they uh, are, they do a pelt up just amazing. Just absolutely beautiful, I guess, is the word for it. So I'm at the part where I'm going to start to roll it now. I'm going to apologize if I roll it in a spot where you're not going to be able to see this with the camera. Actually, I'll turn the beaver around this way and that way you will be able to see it and we'll continue to roll it. Okay, so now I spun the beaver around, the tail's down here, so... But I did this because I wanted to be able to roll it and show you guys what I'm doing here. Again, being careful. Don't want to get into the, the abdomen area. I always skin, when I'm doing my second half, I always do uh, the tail end first and then you'll see what I do after is I flip the hide over and then I just skin, let the hide um, make some weight and I skin out the head. So when we get to that part, I'll show you. Starting to free up a little bit. Again, don't want to rush. Bringing this up, bring the pressure. All right, so there we go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin them this way. This way. You know what's happening here is the weight of the hide is pulling. So I'm just going to keep rolling that off. All right. So my hide's hanging off the end of the table here. Here, here. All right, let me show you that. There, there's a little piece of cartilage I can feel right there, and I can feel his ear. And there, I just cut cut it out. So I'm gonna move this back. Let it hang over the edge. I want to avoid cutting these. These are the. Uh, arteries and they'll make a terrible mess. <laughs> mm. Now you want to be careful as you come around the top part of the head here. You guys can't see because we got a set of eyes here. You don't want these great big gaping eye holes in your in your finished product. So. Alright, getting close to the eye. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm right here at the eye. I'm just going to slowly roll it. See the eye come through there? Slowly do it. And don't speed up until you're through the whole eye. Because you, when you get to the bottom part, you can sure peel a nice big eye hole in there. Once you're clear of the eye, then you're okay. So let's do this side now. It's all down by the jowls and the lips and stuff. Getting close to that eye. There's his eye right there. Pops through. There you go. Two nice little eye holes. Part here, I'm going to come to the nose. I'm going to cut straight down. What I'm trying to do is I'm cutting straight down the nose, right to the through the top of the teeth. There we go. Like that. And there we go.